Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And this is Wide for Jarrett with Believe in the Run. What, what are you doing I'm here? here? I'm here. How did you get we in? got a fourth guy. I went through the back door. Do we give you, like, do you have a code to the building? Uh, no, you just break the door down. Okay. <laughs> That's probably rare. <laughs> you know what's also amazing? While we have Jarrett on as well, Lenzo is doing our check-ins. And if you don't know Lynn, you haven't been to one of our group runs or participated in Great Cause. Lynn is at every single group run pretty much that we do. We go to New York, Lynn is there. And he comes with the best energy. Yeah, he does. And mm-hmm. he's he's actually ran the Brooklyn half with me when I was blowing up <laughs> and dragged my body across the finish line. And we'll actually wait till his first check-in for him to describe the the other way that you remember him. All right. Chicago? Chicago? Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Okay, so don't, don't right. give that away. It's a, it's a little hint. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait. Do you know what I'm talking about, no. Thomas? Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing I know. Okay. Find but out on Friday. I will tell you this. This conversation is making me sleepy, Meg. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Is it? Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what it is. Maybe I it was really... getting up at 4.30 this morning to get my workout in. You Did you run outside? I did. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> two, was it... two days in a row of just being drenched wet. <laughs> Oh, I can't man. even, I, well, we'll probably talk about it. Anyway, you probably slept really well while you were asleep because you were using your lagoon pillow. You know, that's the thing. I solid sleep. I It's almost like it's tuned for me. And, you know, one of the last trips we went on, you actually took your lagoon pillow with you. I and, did. And uh, like are you teddy. doing it again when we go to Boston? I will because, you know what? I don't trust hotel and <laughs> Airbnb pillows. That's fair. Dude, what, what, what kind, kind of, of pillow are you actually leaving at your house if you have an Airbnb? You're going to give people the, oh, I'm Don't not scare using people. this pillow anyway. Anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. a CSI per- yeah. <laughs> agent's let's, wet dream. Right there. Think about it. You're sleeping on some crime scene <laughs> pillow. <laughs> Sorry. Let's change Thomas. And, this is know. off the rails. <laughs> All right. Anyway, right now, if you're getting ready to run Boston like we are, sleep is extremely important and you need to be getting it. So you should definitely have a Lagoon pillow. If you don't, and you can travel with one, too. So if you go How do you to travel with one, Meg? Well, you take it with you. But, but if you go what? to lagoonsleep.com slash believe and you use the code drop at checkout, you can get a free travel bag and free shipping. Nice. I don't even have the travel bag. I need the travel bag. <laughs> uh, I need the travel bag because I am traveling with mine. All right. Hook him off, Lagoon. Yeah. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's not jinx him, though. Yeah. I, I hope his uh, stuff doesn't get lost. I also think mm. they should come Don't out. Don't do it, Jared. I did it. He did it. He did it. You know what? That's karma. It's going to bounce right back in Jared's Have you ever gotten your uh, law? You've lost all your stuff before. Wait, do you not remember this? Thomas told me this. Okay. No, no, no. You're talking about the ski trip one. This is we going to Boston. Weren't you you with us? No. Was Robbie with us? I don't know, but we get to the airport and we're sitting and we're waiting for our bags. And Jarrett goes, wouldn't that be funny if they lost your bag directly to Thomas's face and then they lost his bag? I was there for that. Yeah. Mm. It was the best. Yeah. (laughs) It turns out Robbie was actually the one who stole the bag yeah, <laughs> and, I, and threw it on a different conveyor you'd belt. You'd be surprised how much you can get for Thomas Newberg's <laughs> clothing Dude, on, think, on a secondary market. Think about, I mean, <laughs> when we're looking at prices these days of running gear, mm-hmm. might be worthwhile to yeah. stock a, a, you know, it's a his roundabout. It's all labeled on his, um, you know, on the back of his shirt. It says his name. Yeah, I know it's a federal crime, but it seems like it's one of those that you could kind of get away with, like pretty easily. Well, here's the thing. Unless you're that the dude who is working for... They have video, so you'd have to really plan it out. Like, you'd have to get Inspector Clouseau, like the we're, fake. We're, so you you know what to, I was thinking of for Lagoon? They should make, like, their sponsored athletes, you should get, be able to get custom pillowcases. Like, you could sleep with an Emma Bates pillowcase. Don't make it weird. Yeah, you, you could You had get, to make it weird. You could get okay. the different athletes. <laughs> On your pillow? Yeah. Just so kinda, you could say I'm sleeping with someone? But no, that <laughs> now you're making it weird. I'm thinking more like My Little Pony. What? <laughs> <laughs> <guy. laughs> Wow. Now we're just going into BronyCon. <laughs> Star Wars. The, yeah. uh, well, uh, no. Okay. Anyway, let's move on from but that. If you took that the shark tank, they'd probably arrest you on, <laughs> on stage in front of. <laughs> no, it's a body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, I'm handing a sample out to each of you. We should do that. Put all our faces on Lagoon pillowcases and see which one sells the most. That actually is a fantastic idea. I mean, I mean I'd mean, i want a Robbie because you could cut up with that stash. Dude, it'd be like a, not scratch and sniff, but like like a real life. Like a 3D? Yeah, 3D. Like a little texture that you could rub at night? Like a walrus, like yeah. 
Um, you know the fringes that you you find on the end of like nice um pillowcases, maybe at like someone like I feel I feel like they're like like the royal tassels on the end of pillowcases, like at your grandma's yeah, house. There's yeah. got to be a name for those. You Google what are the tassels? Well, no, those on the they're pillow. tassels on pillows. Okay, those are just. I feel like they're pillows. a little like maybe rich because they're gold okay. colored. If you had to pick a scent for your pillowcase, <laughs> what would be the I scent? Personal like, one, would it be Old Spice? <laughs> probably be hazelnut coffee. <laughs> that's, that's good. So what my mustache yours, smells Megan? like. I don't know. You're usually like you're just. I would say like just fresh. Okay, I like that. Like you know, yeah, I can like see linens, that. Linens like clean. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. do you smell like um like fresh laundry? Like a sheet, yeah, like dryer sheets. Yeah. That's a good smell. I like that. Yeah. It definitely. I don't even care if it's chemical, chemically induced. Nah, that's fine. Yours would be. I'm talking to Jared here. His would be an empty box of Chick Fil A. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, no. I mean that's. Dude, nice. I'll buy that one. <laughs> yeah, sleep in, sleep on that. What's it? Em- like, what is that? Like fried chicken smell? Yeah, I don't. That's not what you want to yeah, sleep grease. with. You sure about that? I'm mm. sure about that. Okay. <laughs> Wait, it'll bring back Robbie's uh, band days. It could smell like cigarettes and chicken yeah. grease, and he'll go right out. It is like how sleeping in a van. How the inside of our van smelled like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was nice. I'll, right. I'll take that. Put that on the pillow for me. All right. Okay, and then well, what about you? Uh, I would go with a complex collection of scents that would, you know, bring out the masculinity in the pillow. <laughs> So chicory <laughs> stick, cinnamon. Chicory stick. Yeah, dang. maybe a little faint gasoline. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is this like a wine you're describing you just or described, a pillowcase? You just described Sex Panther. <laughs> <laughs> this pillowcase, you'll fall asleep 100% of the time, 60% of the time. Uh, all right. Okay, one other thing we just talked about before we get on to all of our running mm-hmm. is the Golden Trail Series. Ooh. Which I know it's not until June, but I feel like all of a sudden it's going to be here and come in real hot. Um, you guys are running. Oh yeah, I'm You're repping both, it today. Yeah. You both have decided on. Did that come yesterday to your house? The Solomon hoodie. Yeah, yeah. I got a white one. I think you've all officially decided on the 11k. In uh, Lake I don't Tahoe. know. I signed up for it. I said to somebody 11k. Yeah, yeah. Is that the sign up? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. You're in. That's in. how it works. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. Are you thinking about the vertical challenge? Um, vertical 1k. It sounds. It sounds cool because it's like, oh, 1K, how hard could that be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to need to rappel down that thing. Well, here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> or I it. could see us doing the vert- vertical 1K, breaking somehow, and then having to do the 11 <laughs> Yeah, you should see which oh, one's yeah. first and make sure. If it's second, I think you go for it. If yeah. it's first, you don't do it. I also like the idea. Of cheering people on. Uh, no, Robbie and I should bring like uh, full-on backpacks mm-hmm. and stop and do like a picnic halfway up and then like... Do yeah. activities on I, the way up. I, do you think you can do activities on that steep of a climb? I, I think there's, I don't know. Are there mountain goats and stuff? I that hope hang so. Out? Yeah. I don't know what kind of wildlife is in these, are in these places. Uh, Tahoe's known for their uh, voracious uh, mountain goat don't, population. Okay. No, okay. Not on this day. Yeah. Not when everyone's out there. Uh, mountain but goats. if you want to join these ridiculous humans, uh, at this race you should do in it. June. You should definitely uh, go to goldentrailseries.com. You can find out all the info. There's also a bunch of other races in the series throughout the year. So if that one doesn't work, you can but go to one of the other ones. It's not going to have a party like we're going to be throwing. Yeah. We're going to be doing all sorts of social stuff. So come by. You can even meet Robbie's prodigy. Oh, well, who's that? My yeah. son? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing my son out. It's going to be a fun time. And I have I skied on that mountain. So I'm thinking there's slopes that if we had to run up Ooh. are going to be very difficult to do a vertical 1K. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, but I am looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I wonder if Rye could beat us both in a vertical 1K because, you know, he, he'll be a scrambler. It, it, there's a, He's closer to the ground, a chance of that. lower body weight. Yeah, there's a chance for sure. I'd put my money on him. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm thinking I'm going to bring sticks. Like the band, like a tape of the cassette tape of the band sticks. Arigato, Mr. Robato. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm going to do like the hand pulls. So oh, okay. Walking sticks up the 1K. Yeah. Dude, everywhere. Like if you see me out there. I, I like how in trail running, it's, you can't call them walking sticks. They're trekking poles. Yeah. <laughs> they're walking sticks. <laughs> like, well, they're not cool. They, they are totally cool. They're trying to make them cool. They're u- they're useful. They're not cool. Yeah. If, well, if, <laughs> if you're skiing, you use poles as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, you should if, ban poles from If everyone. you're out there using trekking poles and thinking you're cool, 
Yeah, yeah. Chances are. Like you definitely have a legionnaire on, <laughs> yeah. which is which is cool and useful. Cool You'll and probably useful. Have, will you have the uh, Robbie Redinger signature uh, uh, legionnaire by I'm, then? I'm gonna have to bring that with. Yeah, the sun know. will be out and shining on my neck. Oh, I wonder to, if they're gonna have a size big enough for Rye. Oh, probably maybe not. You know what? CLA's legionnaires fit kids because they're extremely go. tiny. Oh, they like my up. head. Yeah, I got a tiny. You got a pinhead. Yeah. Basically a pimple on my shoulders. And thanks. Pinhead. Is that the name of the guy from yes. Hellraiser? Yeah. Okay. That's his name. Yeah. I, I wanted to think of what was the uh, tagline for that movie, but I can't remember. Get get pinned in the head. <laughs> no, it was <laughs> more like death is only the beginning. All right. Some, you know, something like that. Which, by the way, there's some uh, opinions about your takes on Dune last week. Yeah. That's a fine. Lot of them. That's fine. All I, right. I'd love to hear some. And I'll rebut. No, we're not talking about okay, Dune on we're, the show anymore. We're ca- talking about Dune at the end. We'll okay, wait. when right. it's when we stop recording. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, how's everyone's running that, going? That's your nap time, Meg. You <laughs> fell asleep last week during that part. I know. I literally was. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's talk about everything else. Let's get into Robbie's running because, like, what's going on, dude? Uh, let's see. So I came back from half fifty k. And then I ran a trail race, first trail, or not trail, trail race, run, trail yeah. run. Felt like I was going to die because that was the first time coming back from hat. Um, but then kind of came around towards the end. Then had a nice 10 mile run on Saturday. Felt great. Like, you know, there's 10 milers where you're like, I could do 20, no problem. Yeah. And usually I feel that way until I get there 16. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 17. You're like, nope. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, geez. And I was having, felt like I was, I ran with them on it. The guy I run with when I'm back home, I ran with him and I was having to like, he was. Uh, you wanted to pick it up? Yeah, I felt like I wanted to pick it up. I wasn't trying to, but that was a good sign. Um, and then I did a hard workout on Sunday where I, man, I felt great. I was just like, it was kind of like a 730, 715 pace, you know, like hitting those. And uh, yeah, so that was awesome. Felt awesome felt during the run, after the run. And then. Uh, <laughs> And then I maybe had a panic attack, which I've never had before. I think they should rename panic attacks. Yeah. Did, did you know this, Jared? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening. It's yeah. not like it's a crazy. I didn't know if I. Yeah. So have you had this? Have you had a panic attack before? I think I did back in like late 20s, early 30s. Okay. But I, I, Cause, I it just felt like my heart was fluttering. Yeah. I felt a little dizzy. Mm-hmm. And so it was weird. So I went to the doctor, and because I found that the <coughs> apparently everyone that I know has had one, <laughs> not everyone, but a lot of people. And what I felt was just this kind of overwhelming sensation of I was just like sitting there at my parents' house after Easter dinner and the Easter egg hunt. Which I'm not gonna lie, I thought I hid the eggs pretty well, <laughs> like. The kids are, you know how Easter egg hunts are super lame these days? They're just like th- throw the they're eggs right in Yeah, the they're like all in a field. You see them. Yeah. 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 I was like, that? oh, no, no, no. They're they're trying to walk around. Just look. I'm like, you need to pick things up, move lids. Like, yeah. Jared, what do you do for Easter egg hunts? Because you're Jewish. I've done Easter egg no, hunts. No, don't they do something different? Looking for a piece of bread or something? Oh, you're thinking <laughs> of hiding the matzah. There you go. <laughs> oh, is that a thing? Yeah, uh, not okay. during Easter. How well do they hide it? Pretty well. Wait, isn't it isn't Passover the Last Supper for Jesus? Uh, like, do you're you, asking the wrong. Person. I think that's the no, no. That's different. Yeah, because the Last Supper would be like the week before, right? And usually, isn't Passover and and around, Easter like around the same time? Well, I think it. Mm, this week, I mean, Passover. We have, we have Passover. This week in biblical no, pass- studies. <laughs> yeah, we Passover not celebrates even. when they passed over the ho- like during the plagues when they passed over the houses of, that were marked. So it's celebrating like the like basically survival of all the Jewish. I can't wait for I the comments to, on this. I just want to know if you hid the eggs in like <laughs> your parents, uh, the beehives and stuff. Oh, that I didn't, would be good. I didn't hide them in my mom's uh, beehive. No, I want to know if you were that Tired dad who goat. stood there with his arms crossed and was like, I can see at least four from where I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your dad made? Did you just imitate Ian? I'm not going to lie. I did that a lot. I was like, 
I was getting angry because I'm like, it's not, it's near a corner of the house. The money egg <laughs> is at a corner of the house. And, the they're, money like, egg. and they're just like, kind of like, I'm like, you need to actually move things. Stop, look, just stop. You can't, you're not just going to see it with your eyes. You need to move Look, he's things. even got the arms crossed. This is why you had a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was just like getting so annoyed because I'm like, my, my kids aren't the ones like looking for them. I'm like, you guys aren't getting any of the money eggs. Your cousin Taylor is getting all the money eggs. So your I spent all yeah. this time picking up change on the street yeah. for you guys to give it to your cousin. I just yeah. need to know, you're a household that's hiding Fake eggs versus real dyed eggs. Yeah, so I think we used to do real dyed eggs when we were kids, but I guess we've since moved on to the the uh, consumer economy and just do eggs filled with candy and money. Like the plastic cheap things, you just like, yeah. oh, that's lame. Yeah, low effort. At all. No, that's not lame. I ate. I'm with you, man. Thanks. I get no, it. No, I like the ones that and then you don't find them and then like a month goes by and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, what's that smell? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they so they ended up. Uh, it's not a lot of money either. It's like a dollar, but that's a that's hey, nice when you're a kid. You try earning a dollar when you're twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh, wait, um, how how old is Jonas? He's five. Yeah, that kid can't earn a dollar. No, that's a lot of work. He'd have to like start a lemonade stand. Well, well whenever they do something like a lemonade stand or try to sell, they were selling those fortunes, fortune tellers. You know, the paper things. It's all the neighbors are like, oh, let's support this young businessman. But I'll give you twenty dollars. I'm like, no, you're inflating the value of these fortune tellers, which is going to make them think that they're worth more than they actually are, and that money is easy to come by. So it's like, well, I appreciate you rewarding them. That's not how real business works, and they're going to have a skewed concession. That depends. Of reality. He, Jarrett works for the government. <laughs> That's actually true. you have a good yeah, point. So I'm wondering, like, are so they maybe those are taxes? Good prices. Are, yeah, are they like? Do they have any sort of permits? I mean, the fortunes <laughs> were pretty good, and I shook down our local councilman to buy one because he All was right. he was at the playground. I was like, go hit him up for a dollar. Um, get some of my contributions. Speaking back. of councilmen, I did check on because we sent over the proposal for the building a track in Patterson Park. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard back, now the Baltimore Parks and Recreation Department, uh-huh. whatever, is... Another entity. They're getting involved. So, yeah, this is, it, it, it could you be a little more complicated yeah. than I thought. But... Of course. But I did throw out there, if it's not going to be in the annex of Patterson Park, I'm open to other, other uh, yeah. options. So, but... We got to figure out how to build a public track in Baltimore because there just isn't one. Yeah, that's in the works. Yeah, and maybe your kids could, you know, since they're getting twenty bucks, uh, fortune. <laughs> maybe I could get them on our fundraising. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. First checking. This is Ling, the firm believer. You may also know me as the same Ling who got Thomas into the whole Emily Sisson situation in Chicago last year. Although, I'm still 100% sure that was Emily Sisson herself. Anyways, Thomas is busy with his Boston training right now, and I'm taking over the check-ins for this week. I want to take this opportunity to share with you three things you can do to become a firm believer just like me. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Always listen to the Drop and Feel for the Soul podcast during your runs. And let me tell you why. Non-believers will say, we're doing this just for entertainment. They will tell you to focus on your breathing, your strides, and all that. But only a firm believer knows the true benefits of running while laughing. That's the most efficient way to increase your VO2 max. Sometimes you have to stop just because you're laughing way too hard. That's called interval training, by the way. If you know, you know. All right, back to the show now. Yeah, anyway, so I don't know, even know. Oh, Easter. And panic attacks. Panic. Yeah, did you finish describing okay, what that so, felt yeah. like? So, <clears throat> I yeah, so it was like a overwhelming feeling of, I don't know how to say this, but dread. Like, like I. So the, it was emotional before it was physical? No, it was physical. I felt like warm, like almost like coming up through my body, like into my head and like upper body feeling okay. where it's, it wasn't quite like you were going to pass out because I wasn't dizzy per se, but it's kind of like shortness of breath. Like mm. sounds like me finishing an Eki Ben uh, <laughs> yeah. chicken. Yeah. Chicken it's the meat sweats basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was, 
<laughs> it was the worst time because they were singing happy birthday to my kid, and I'm like, just hold it together. Like, don't, like, do they're anything all, crazy. They're all looking at me. I was, like, imagining <laughs> that scene in old school where Will Ferrell yes. just, like, falls into the, t- <laughs> the table of birthday. Hello, Christmas, <laughs> You're crazy, man. I love you. But yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, so I just, like, held it together. The best way I can describe it, honestly, is it was, like, a bad edible high. Uh and mixed with like someone's about to drive up into a wall and you're not in control of the steering wheel. Oh gosh. Whoa. <laughs> that is intense. That is a nightmare. Yeah. Why did why did this happen? I don't know. So that's what is kind of was kind of confusing is that I've never had that anything like that happen. Yeah. And so and so of course like since I've never had anything that happen, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna die. And so I thought mm-hmm. like something serious was happening. And so it really freaked me out. And um, so then I went to, I felt better than later that day. And then it happened again, like the next morning, but not as bad. So then I went to the emergency room at Hopkins just cause I didn't know, I had no idea, you know? And then that was the- uh, Mistake. Don't it, just, if you're listening to this and you live in Baltimore, don't ever go to the emergency room at Hopkins Bayview, probably any Hopkins or anywhere in the city. I was there for, like, I got triaged pretty quickly, so I had my blood test and everything done, and I, that was nice. Do you know why? What? They were collecting that money. That's when they charged oh, that. Yeah, that's, that's $500 oh, right for there, sure, just for to sure. check in. Yeah. And I, to say hello. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. And so I got, it was nice because I had all my tests that I could see because they were uploaded to your account, so I was like, okay, like. You can see that it looks fine because it tells you if you're in the normal ranges. Wouldn't it be weird if they're like, this dude just had a panic attack? Yeah, they could have just told me that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so then I'm waiting there in the waiting room. And then it kept, I knew it would probably be like eight hours because I knew it takes forever. But, and I knew last time they told me don't go in on a Monday because everyone waits till the weekend's over to get all their stuff taken care of. So the emergency room's always packed on Monday. Why don't they just give you, like, at a deli counter, give you a ticket? That's what I'm saying. Like, there has to be a better There's way. Or, definitely or, like, a when way. you go to a restaurant, they give you the beeper. Yeah. And mm, that's patient first. And if you do go to the emergency room and you hear them say the number three, that means you're right in the middle. So anybody coming in who's a one or a two is going to go right ahead of you. And so because I was not priority, I ended up sitting there for 16 hours. Uh, see, I don't know how you did that. Yeah, Like we sat there for 15 minutes and we were like, let's get out. Well, I, after the eight hour mark, you're like, I'm pot committed. Yeah. So I feel like I have to just ride it out. And then I felt like I was in, I told you this, I felt like I was in a Mr. Beast challenge where I'm like, I need to outlast the other people who were here <laughs> the same time I was. Keep a hand on <laughs> yeah. the car. Yeah. <laughs> and I did outlast, I did outlast everyone that, that I arrived with. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I, I, that was a feather in my cab. What was it like getting up though and leaving at 16 hours? It was a little, it was <laughs> two in the morning. So I thought <laughs> it wasn't so bad. Uh, like, did you have snacks and stuff? Like what were Kimmy you Kimmy brought me food and stuff. Yeah. So I had, unlike a Mr. Beast video, I did have an outside <laughs> source giving me <laughs> fuel. Um, but it was a great, like, it's also one of those scenes that you can imagine are entertaining to me. Cause it's just, it's just chaos. Yeah. Like, uh, is this going to be in your weekly newsletter? I had thought about it, but it's kind of a hard, it's like a weird one-off thing yeah. where there was people, I actually took notes. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you see anything like wild? Well, I went, to, the one time I went to take a piss cause I had to fill up a, well, I just was there forever. And I thought, I was like, look down and there was blood and I was like, oh, shit, did I just, and then I realized, no, that was just from somebody before me where there's blood all over the place. Ugh. And then, uh, and then the the bathroom ran out, ran out of soap at one o'clock. <laughs> at five notes, o- five notes. o'clock, it was still out of soap. Notes. At nine thirty, the bathroom had soap, but the dispenser was broken. So imagine <laughs> an emergency room. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking all your notes are on the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so then at eleven fifteen p.m., these two guys got in an argument because someone. The one guy let the other guy borrow his lighter, mm. but the guy went to his appointment and didn't give it back. So he was gone for like four hours uh. and he came back. So they started fighting over the lighter, but then they kind of resolved it quickly. And then the other guy offered him a blunt, mm. at which point the security guard overheard it from the from next to the she was on the other side of this wall. 
So she came over and admonished them, and then he started yelling at her and telling her to effing mind her own business and kept getting increasingly mad. I mean, weed is legal in Maryland now. Uh, You know that you could have cut like four hours off your time if you just stabbed yourself. (laughs) That's actually, I thought about it. I was like, I should have just said, I was literally The only way that Thomas ever even got in there was by ambulance. So that's the only way you get seen. Oh yeah, for sure. And then it was just head wound. (laughs) They thought a woman peed her pants, but, and all over the floor, but I think she just spilled a cup. And then uh, another guy, an, another woman accused the guy who was fighting over the lighter of looking in her wallet while she was going to the bathroom. Mm. Um, so this is all. So are th- this is, oh. Why do you have two phones? Oh, I found someone's phone today on the ground, and so I was waiting for them to Are call. you the one who just put that in, like, Brewers Hill neighbor or Canton Neighbors or whatever? Yeah. You know you can stop that alarm. Yeah. It, it says find my phone alert. Oh. And they're they're, yeah, they're looking for it, it but I don't know how to. I think you can. They're gonna honestly, track it down here. Dude, can you? Can dude, you do throw it hate, out the front. Can you do that? Hey <laughs> Siri, call. No, like, I tried that. They just call my mom. Yeah. Because I have my phone with okay, me. Well, stop your phone from doing it. Sorry. There you should. should there you should be, a be able, like a button there, that yeah. texts back. Like, here's your phone. Oh man! Apparently they called me, but it was on silent, so I missed it. All right, so that's Robbie's running this week. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, all I have to say, I think it's fine. Like, I went to the doctor yesterday, and he was like, we'll get test run, but it seems like it was just a panic attack. So I've never had that happen before. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know. What, but And I talked to my coach who was like, I have seen that happen with athletes before, like my his athletes, because, you know, I did the 50K, came back four days after, started kind of going hard again, trying to get ready for Boston. And... Maybe I'm just, you know, even though I felt good physically, like my body could be just like chill out a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm are you just taking good. some downtime now? Like, are you running? I took a couple of days off. I was going to run today, but then I looked outside and I was like, no, nah, dude. dude, I'll just wait. Another it day. was wet. <laughs> I can't it was really wet. It's the worst weather outside. The past three days have been awful. Yeah. It's just cold enough for the wet to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it is not enjoyable at all. So you ran like so this weekend I did yeah, that's what I meant. a long run sort of with Jarrett. Jarrett came out and did six miles with me and I was running in the new ultra, uh, vanished carbon two. And I don't care what they say. That thing is rockered because I was going, when we were doing warm up miles, you know, you're not picking up your feet quite as much. And I kept, scuff in the bottom and i almost okay. i was with jared yeah thomas almost fell like five times really and, and i was nah. freaking out yeah well how what about Not your again. arm I know. it's coming together it's coming together or just staying together he's doing, staying he's staying he's together. doing push-ups so which i'm like what are you doing again. like that's like the dumbest thing but anyway dude <laughs> uh, just do one arm push up. I'm trying to i tried to do one it's impossible <laughs> like Very i difficult. just don't have that kind of strength <laughs> um <laughs> But so Jared and I were running. I was like, we almost, I knew I was dropping Jared back off at the house around six miles. So I almost switched out of shoes. But when we, the, so what I was doing was like a progressive run. So it was five miles easy, five miles a little faster and then five miles hard. Mm -hmm. Um, And when we started coming back and I started doing the uh, first mile of the five mile faster, uh, the shoe felt pretty good. And I was like, I think I'll just stick with it. So I used it. And uh, I actually think it's a really good option for people who don't want to go either mainstream, who want a little more toe room, <coughs> uh, toe box room, or just love Ultra and they want to stay with the brand. It, it's 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 a pretty sweet shoe. And so this is the, you, you said Vanish Carbon too, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I was trying to find the specs that I have on it. Just to see. Okay. So this has, they went up to a full carbon plate right the rubber on the bottom seems a little more durable and a little more coverage is it and the foam is different the ego foam is a little different is it a sup- still super critical foam is it it's not p-backs right i don't think it is p-backs but it feels really good so okay yeah i'm sure um so they said they increased the stack height yeah three millimeters yeah from 33 it to definitely 36. feels rockered and when you put it on a table very lightweight you can see you can see it's rockered. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's not zero. I don't, I wouldn't call it zero. They drop. call it what balanced cushioning now. 
Yeah. Yeah. I would, it's someone, uh, I saw someone comment that said it has a, actually a five millimeter differential. Oh, really? But I don't know. Um, it feels pretty good anyway. Um, so Jarrett ran, we did the worst route. We ran up that giant hill in Dundalk. Uh, oh, yeah. We, like Dundalk kind of the Heights. reverse the reverse loop of what we normally do. Where you can see the view of what used to be the key bridge. Yeah, but it, we went up the hill, up that instead of down that. Yeah. Um, did and, you, which by the way, we didn't even, that happened after we did the podcast last week. Oh, yeah. Didn't it? I think. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. I, I, a lot of people were asking us. Because we recorded on Monday last week oh, early and right. it happened on Tuesday. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah. A lot of people were asking us if we were okay and stuff and we are, but it is pretty tragic. It uh, It's, it's tragic. It could have been so much worse. Yeah. Way, they shut like, down way the worse. traffic. Yeah. They got uh, the, the uh, they, they Did you minimized. know there's still people on the ship? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, they're there's, still on the yeah. ship? They're, they're not allowed to leave. The people who work who work the ship. Well, that's like a Mr. Beast challenge right there. I was right going to say, there's yeah. your Mr. Beast challenge. Yeah, so got that that run done. And um, for the rest, I, I just did like my final, I, I would guess my final speed work. I'm going to do some paces at Cherry Blossom. But today I had Chris Hogger, and I'm going to give him a shout out because I have blasted Chris in the past for being a horrible... <laughs> Uh, yeah, one of the worst. One of the worst pacers. <laughs> and today he did his job phenomenally well. Wow. He was fantastic. Came out. We got, I got up at 4.30. We got, I met up with him at um, 5.50 or so at, on the, at the annex. And we did that loop. And by the way, I saw Mary out there. Uh, PT Mary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, and, um, PT Mary. True Sports Mary. Yeah. No, 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 not put True Sports. Um. Isn't that PT Mary? Yeah, no, PT, the one that's... Uh, Annie? Annie. Annie. Oh. Annie. Yeah. <laughs> They're like best friends. Yeah. So it and my, they might have been together. I don't know. Yeah. But um, it, no, I saw Annie because it was dark out. But I saw Annie and uh, so uh, we did the 800 loop. He was phenomenal coming out in the rain. Dude, it was cold. It I'm was looking windy. at it right now. You did 12 miles today? Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, the 12 miles, it was a three mile warm up, three mile cool down. So... The middle, whatever. Yeah, the, don't, don't don't. You don't ran it. You started at five twenty a.m. Yeah, Dude, you are dedicated to the cause. Yeah. So, but it, I mean, we have that's probably it until I am cherry blossom. We'll do a little bit of marathon pace, I think, at cherry blossom, and then I'm I'm cruising in. I'm rolling into a shakeout run at New Balance on Friday night, and then I'm doing a little time at the New Balance store on Saturday, Sunday. We have, sorry, we have one of the best shakeouts there is. I mean, that this is the third year we'll be doing the ASIC shakeout. It gets bigger every year. It's the RSVPs are off the chain. What are what are they at right now? Do you know? Uh, I'll tell you. And I'm wearing the hat that will be given away. That is delish. Dude, it's so nice. This corduroy. I, I mean, you haven't done one like this before. No, it's so nice. Megan loves it's this my one. Favorite. I think we might have to do a, a separate one for the store. Yeah, we have 700 RSVPs for the ASIC shakeout run. Um, we haven't hit our cap yet for New Balance, but I have a feeling we're going to. That's so good. if you have an RSVP'd for New Balance, you really need to go do that. And that one's going to be the fun one because not that they won't, they'll both be fun, trust me. But we're going to be giving out socks. And um, it's Friday. We're going to do a, a run, but then we're just going to go hang out and have fun and then play some trivia. There's going to be some beverages. Have some beverages, some snacks. Yeah. You know. Making me feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, Jared, you won't be there yet. Lame. Yeah, stupid. I got. I moved my flight up already, so I could do the 5K with you, and and then not early enough. Yeah, no. enough. Yeah. Not early it's enough. Never enough. It's never enough, is it, Thomas? You no, are. I don't know. You are Ken off, Jared. <laughs> Isn't that the whole Barbie and Ken? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's. I feel like that's a stretch to use that catchphrase. It is. You are Ken. Ken off. But yet here you are. It's enough, not key enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it doesn't work. I agree with you. All right. Stop putting it on shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah. I'm excited to have you there, Jared. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. So that. I basically though, and I, Lynn stopped by the office who's doing those check-ins. Yeah. And he's, I think he's thinking about running with, uh, at least at the start of Boston. Uh, with oh, really? Us. Yeah. Okay. 
So my workout today is kind of a predictor because it was a 10 What does it predict you to run, Thomas? You did yeah, basically yes, it was right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, what, of them. that's what I was supposed to do too until this whole deal, <laughs> which I love doing this. So. Yeah, you'll be fine, Robbie. You always pull races It'll, out of your No, I, I feel good. I feel fine over, in that way. Yeah. It would have been nice to do a little bit more, but. You know, but then when it be Robbie. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So how, what was your predictor then? How'd you do? I, I, it's put me right around the 3.30 mark. So okay. Maybe yeah. Maybe a little under 3.30. Yeah. Maybe right at 3.30. But I mean, look, Boston's a, a tricky course. I'm just going to be excited to to run it healthy, hopefully. And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk with my coach tomorrow and he'll give me kind of like, I don't know if that was his plan but he wanted to talk to me after this workout. So I'm guessing that it is part of his plan because he was going to tell me about uh, Cherry Blossom, what pace is to do there. And he said marathon pace. So I'm guessing this is probably an indicator for him of where where that might land. I don't know. Megan, you've been working with him longer than I have. What do you think? I mean, I chatted with him this morning. Mm -hmm. I think that's the plan. All right. I think that's what he's going to tell you. All right. If you think about it, this could be the first marathon that we both are running that we are not doing together. Why wouldn't we do it together? I'm not 3.30. I don't know if you dude, know what you it's can, like to have kids. Dude, you can hang. But I have a baby, and it's pretty tough. You and Robbie are two people that can just pop off. I don't know. I feel like it, I don't know if that's the same as of late. I feel like it used to be the case, but I've had a string of okay races. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel like the marathon is different than like, a 10 K half marathon. Like, sure. Like you could go race a 10 you miler. Could cheat, you could cheat a, yeah, you a can cheat a less. lot of those you uh, can't with, the your, marathon. with your training. Like you can have a good day, even on a half marathon and just have a good day. Yeah. Ma- marathon. Even if you're having a good day, you're going to burn out if you're not ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that, but you're, you have a good day. You're ready by f- like way more ready than I feel like I've ever seen you. I feel like this was a really solid block of training. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anything under three thirty would be uh, a party popper. Uh, but it, it is Boston. It's going to be tough. We're going to be uh, fighting through the crowds in the beginning. So I, I, I'll be real happy no matter where we end up. I just want to have a good day and have some fun and and do the best I can that day. So that's that's the goal. Megan, however, you, we haven't talked about your running. I know. Well, yeah, I'm finally back to normal, I think, kind of. I Jarrett now has the plague that I had, which oh, yeah. was, it's terrible. And oh, you, do you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. He also tested negative for flu, COVID, strep, like all the things mm-hmm. I did. But it just, it seemed to linger forever. And the cough Lingerer. would be at nighttime. It was like the worst. Um, but yeah, now I'm feeling good. I had a solid two workouts last week. I attempted a workout yesterday, which was comical because like we were talking about at the beginning of the show. Torrential. The weather was insane. I've ne- I don't think I've ever actually run in worse conditions than yesterday morning. You really? you actually it was bad yesterday. When you came in and stood over those towels dripping. Like, I've never it's it wasn't even wet rat. I checked the radar before I went out and there was no sign of thunderstorms. <laughs> and then I'm at the furthest point away from the house, like at least 6 miles. And this crazy storm comes through. It's like 20 mile per hour winds, pouring down rain, thunder, lightning. And like, I don't know where the streams of water came from, but they were everywhere. Biblical. <laughs> did you did you wear the open ear bows? I did. I was wearing those too. And when the first, because I wasn't expecting thunder. Yeah. And when the first clap of thunder, I was like, what was that? Is it, are these headphones? Did something happen? <laughs> And, and I, I, it didn't feel like, like I couldn't tell if it was a real thunder or a car crash or what. Cause like you had those open ears. So music was playing at the same time, but yeah, I ended up just taking them out and holding them in my hand. Cause it was just like pouring. And I just wanted to like hear like what was around me, even though I couldn't really hear or see anything. But, um, I, I don't understand waterproof jackets. Like I even Googled before I went out, is this a waterproof jacket? And the Soar Ultra jacket that we have, it says it's 100% waterproof. I felt like I was wearing a weighted blanket out there. 
And Thomas is saying that that's just like there's nothing but that you can you do. But were you wet inside? I was soaking wet everywhere. Yeah, but you, she was probably also sweating. Yeah, were that, you, and then it, and it gets in that. Yeah, if it gets, it in, gets it, down it, to the yeah. collar. Yeah, it's like Gore-Tex. If it's in, it's that, in. It's it's not leaving. That jacket doesn't have a hood, right? No. Yeah, that's definitely getting in through the top. I, I'm sorry. I don't, I, like, I don't understand hoodless rain jackets at all. Well, I wore the um the Gore uh Gore wear one that we got the yellow one. Yeah, and. What I like about it is when you're at least starting the run, you get to ease into the wetness. So it's like you're not immediately Soaked. drenched yeah. and you get to warm up. And then as you warm, you're sweating, right. the rain's coming. You're inevitably going to get wa- water down the neck or whatever. So you still get wet underneath, but I think it just gives you that little space of time to not be like open the door wet, which today was pretty much it wasn't even, I didn't think it was raining when I went out. It was almost like snow rain. It was like this was mist yeah. of yeah. wetness. And I was I was pretty much wet within 50 feet. Thomas and I were talking about this though. Do you guys, when you, like it's raining out and you're, you're committed to going out and running and like when you first start running, you like avoid the puddles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then that's on, 100% me. And then on the yeah. way back, like you're so soaked, you just like don't even care anymore. And you're like just running through puddles and your cars are going by and splashing you. And it's just like, you've given up all hope. Uh, yeah. I yeah. used one of the lightest race day shoes today. I used the um, Meta Speed Sky uh, Paris. Mm-hmm. And I was avoiding the puddles. And then, you know, we were doing speed work and I was just like, screw it. I'm going to have to run through the puddles. By the end of the repeats, my feet felt so heavy mm-hmm. and just wet and then just uncomfortable. And that's not even a heavy, that's the latest shoe yeah, it's, out it's there. Yeah, it's less really. than eight ounces for a uh, size 10 and a half. So, yeah. Second checking. Again, this is your boy Elaine, the firm believer. This one is all about nutrition. And I think aka feathers might have approved this message. Say you're in the middle of your run right now and you're probably feeling a bit dehydrated and you could use some snacks. And then out of sudden, you see there happen to be supplies out there in the wild. A firm believer will always ask this question. What would Rabi do? Forget about the three seconds rules. Those are just too generic and those are for the non-believers. Just repeat after me. What would Robbie do? What would Robbie do? Can you see clearly now? You're welcome. Long live the raccoons. Now, back to the show. All right, let's take a little hydration break, Meg. Today's sponsor is, again, Element. I'm drinking it right now. (laughs) We love drinking it all the time. Thomas is drinking it right now. And some of the benefits of the electrolyte beverage are that it maintains steady energy, it improves your cognitive function, you suffer from fewer headaches, which Robbie can attest to. 100%. It's a game changer in that department after a long run. You experience fewer muscle cramps, which I can attest to for sure. And it's just, it helps your performance in general. Yeah, and I've got a couple special recipes for you. Definitely try mixing it with club soda or sparkling. What do you call it? Seltzer water? Sparkling water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, try it with that over ice. Pretty good. It's a nice treat. If you want a little hydration treat and a little kick, you can even mix this with a little bit of vodka or tequila. <laughs> Make your own ranch water. It's pretty good. But I use it for pretty much everything. All right. And if you want to get some element yourself, you can actually get a free sample pack with any order if you use our link, which is drinklmnt.com slash the drop. Now back to the show. So is running going well though? Like, yeah, I'm. I this morning I was like, why am I so tired? And I, <laughs> I realized I just my mileage was higher than L- I realized. Uh, how many miles have you run in the last eight days? Over a hundred. <sighs> Which, like, when I look at my Strava, you know, I'm just looking at the seven day. So I'm like, oh, I did 80 miles last week. That's like fine, normal. And then I was like, I don't understand why I'm so tired. And then I did the like cumulative past eight days. And I was like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's probably that's it. so crazy. Um, but my last <laughs> long run tomorrow, 15 miles. And then, yeah, cruise until Boston. Well, no, you've got cherry blossom. Yeah, which is going to be really hard because I'm not meant to race it. Here's what I love. Mm. You have to convince me to like go out and get a good hard run in 
Megan's the opposite. It's like you gotta <laughs> like, you gotta calm her down. Be like, do not run this like a race. Yeah, yeah. that was basically my call with uh, my coach this morning. He was like, you will not be racing. You have to practice patience. And I was like, ah, <laughs> do I have to? It's gonna be a nice weather. <laughs> Ten miles. It's I can recover not raining. quickly. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be really hard. <laughs> Is that a race that you could? Win? No. Oh gosh, no, 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 no. no. Wait, is it a place pros come out? Could you come in top? No, there's 20? a there's a pro women's field. Oh, yeah. I knew that it was pretty fast, but I didn't. I mean, makes getting there where you could do a shocker. You don't think you could finish top twenty? I think when I ran my PR there, which was a sub sixty, I was like thirty something. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah, that's a. That's a spicy one. Yeah. And by the way, if you're coming to run that race, there will be no cherry blossoms left. Not with this rain. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, f- first off, I think they bloomed like six months ago. <laughs> For real. <laughs> it was like, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah. It was peak bloom. Um, it was real pretty. I would yeah. say that. It, it was early this year, wasn't yeah. it? I feel like uh, spring in a way is... You know how fall, you look forward to it every year and you're like, oh, I can't wait to do the fall thing. This And then it's like over in a week. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? Now it's just cool. Unless you're at Jared's house and they're eating cider donuts oh and shit up every Pumpkin day. spice uh, lattes. They get Slurpees the made of cider. Basic batch basic, you've ever seen. Give yeah. me fall everything forever and that's like my Pumpkin life. Pumpkin rides. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Pumpkin Patch, get some, some of the apple cider donuts, get an apple cider slushy. And the thing is, he doesn't go to one and do it. It's like the tour of, like, it's like, ooh, I went to Hogger's Farm. You should, yeah. Now we got to go to Weber's. Jordan in the box of, of pumpkins to get that picture. I mean. You're basically uh, like Berenstein Bears in real life. Oh, my like, God. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good. Uh, that's, that's Jared. That's Jared. <laughs> Jared lives in bear country. <laughs> um, and I was, <laughs> I would say, uh. What was I going to say about the apple cider donuts and stuff? Apple cider donuts. I feel donuts. like there's a little bit of overrated <laughs> stuff when it comes to apple cider. I know, don't get me wrong. I love some apple cider. But when you start putting it in everything, there are just some things where it doesn't hit hit as good as it, you agree. think it should. I, I, I think farm. all of it's overrated. The only thing I like that has apples in it is, uh, what is it? It's the cider, but it's the alcoholic cider. Uh, what? The, you know, the cider that's... You mean like Magners? Like, yeah, like a, the, the ciders like, you drink that oh, are like, like a Oh, just like a cider. They're like a beer, though. Yeah, yeah. just cider. Just yeah. cider. Hard cider. Yeah, hard, hard, cider. Cider. hard cider. I don't think they're uh, they're all apples. Yeah, I think that's just... Uh, I mean, wait, doesn't cider have to come from apples? I do. Does right? it? I think so. Because you... Couldn't you have... Can you have grape cider? Isn't that wine? <laughs> yeah. Ciders can also be made from strawberries, peaches, plums, etc. Oh, so what's the definition of a cider? As a not a cider, is Jared a can give fer- us fermented. Jared can give us the cider definition. Most popular is made from fermented pear juice. Oh, I did not know that. That's the most popular one. It's probably um, Europe. Yeah, there's France. Europe. France. Is oh, okay. Who's doing this? They like they like a. We uh, should try some fancy. C- apple. We should try some cider when we go to France. I would because like. I told you I went there and tried to get a vodka martini, and they gave me a Malibu. Yeah, drink. Yeah, but when have you ever been like I could really go for a pear? Oh, I love pears. No, pears are pretty not great. Uh, like no, <laughs> I'm not into pears. If you either. get it, it's a little bit like a honey. You know when you get a honeydew in the tray, the custom trays of fruit. Yeah, and the honeydew is never ripe. Yeah, like there's like it's ripe for maybe two and a half hours of its lifespan. Honeydew is the green one or the orange one? The green one, and then no cantaloupes like you, you, hit or miss. You can do. Okay. What's more disappointing though? Like I find this with carrots too. You'll get a sweet carrot, and then I'll spend the rest of the day trying to find another sweet carrot that matches that deliciousness. Oh, wow. So like I'm not a carrot connoisseur, so I don't like even every once in a while we'll get a watermelon and it will just be the best watermelon you ever had. And then the rest of the summer we're buying watermelons, I just want to throw them out. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's no good. Here, but yeah, it's not sweet. Yeah. It's just like Oh yeah, it's like kind of pale. Yeah. Looks like it didn't like flavorless. That's the problem with fruit. They gotta get their consistency down. They never will. Yeah. The fruit I'm reading that. People. It looks like I read this book to my kids about this bunny called Benicula where he would 
get into the fridge at night and drain the fruits and vegetables of all their liquid. So he's like a, a, a vampire fruit? Yeah, but Nick, you know, he's a bunny Dracula. So then when he would come, when they would come in the morning, all the fruits, they'd be all white. That's what your, reminds me of, those crappy watermelons that you get. Yeah. There's watermelons at the grocery store right now. I'm like, dude, where, where are, are they those coming, coming from? from? Good question. It probably fell off the boat that ran into the I also ridge. saw people are growing watermelons. They do it in a cinder block so they get a square watermelon. That's that's a little bit like, I was thinking about that because when I have plants at home, you have to train them to go straight up. And I was like, is that a, is that kind of like binding feet yeah. for plants? It is. Yeah, they have the plastic. Don't make it weird. You can grow them into and it shapes them. <laughs> You, yeah, you but, behind the plants, yeah. but and I'm then you like, put a, a pillowcase in, on them. In a hundred years, are we gonna find out that we were doing putting watermelons in cinder it, blocks? Is like putting we're like, not here in a hundred years, man. We yeah. are not here. You don't have to worry oh, about I'm it. I'm not here. For no, sure. I'm saying. I, psh, oh, you humanity. think human human? I say almost say human waste, which is uh, which is probably accurate. <laughs> I think organic <laughs> humans will probably be gone in a hundred years. You, so you just think we're going to exist in the, the... I mean, maybe there'll be collectibles. Like, they'll have, like, a few of them around. <laughs> but, yeah. I we think, can't go down this hole of what Thomas thinks is going to happen to us in the future because it is ridiculous. Dude, AI, we have uncorked the bottle. We are on the verge of singularity. It's all happening soon. Mm. These are going to be the good old days. Like, you know how we look back... Uh, my kids look at that, like, they see Stranger Things and they think my childhood was like that, which it kind of was. Except for the upside down world, <laughs> but um, well, I the, did, yeah. Like, no. the, we're gonna look back at this time and be like, "Look, it was still charming." The people were walking around with phones and stuff. Yeah, you're probably right. Do you know that Instagram account, Old Time Hockey? Mm -mm. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. He's this guy who lives in like Wisconsin or Minnesota, and he just does quite these, a stash. He just does these very simple videos that are like nostalgic of him just making food in his trailer in the middle of nowhere. With old school, you would like it. All right. And he's got 2.6 million yeah, followers. Yeah, he's huge. He does collabs with people. He does Sh Shane Gillis. He was on stage with Shane Gillis. Oh, I love Shane Gillis. But anyways, so he's pretty has a pretty big Instagram following. And I was like, this guy, in 100 years, either we're all going to be like this dude <laughs> or no, there's not going to be a single person left like this. So it's either like what you said. Yeah. We're either going to be completely I done. just don't see, like, if you were to follow logic, what would be the use of having us around? Yeah, just like a zoo, almost like a zoo, probably. Yeah. You to keep the good ones. All right. Yeah. Not, not my problem, so. Yeah, not my chair, not my problem. All right, yeah. so. You just had a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gonna be okay, Jared. We've all had these. Had to think about this. <laughs> Anyways, so Jared, are you? Uh, you're running Boston. Uh, yeah, I was trying to do this solidarity thing. So keep that mic real up to your mouth. I was almost swallow it. Yeah, like I don't know what solidarity what's, thing. Pretend it's a uh, Chick Fil A, uh, <laughs> spicy <laughs> jalapeno. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything was going great. Like, I mean, I was running with Thomas. You were there for periods of time during our long runs. Yeah, you um, guys were there for Armgate. Mm hmm. You saw it, the band aid bullets. Uh, but all of a sudden, last week, I got hit. Whatever Meg got hit with, I got hit with. Which Oh, did, so you ran through it like Meg did? No, I oh. didn't. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that I went to patient first instead of going to the ER like you, which I'm not quite sure why. Maybe afterwards we'll give you like a group hug and that could help with. I mean, it does show you that our. our Medical system is broken when the Seven Elevens of medical care yeah. is the place to go now. Well, you, well, no, 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 it's it's actually not because I went in for this cough and I got tested negative for everything, but then they told me that my BMI was too high, so <laughs> so I cut off like fifteen hours, but I also got some serious body shaming. Yeah, you did. So why just, why why did they give you your BMI? I information? don't know. They didn't even they just blame saw me. Them and were like, hey, guess they, what? They were like you. <laughs> And then I was, this guy's I was going to be like, do watch, I they probably had somebody in the back. They're like, watch this, watch this. <laughs> I was going to be like, do I show them my Strava? Like I, uh, we run marathons. Come on. Yeah. Leave me just a little bit alone. You can, I'm here. I'm struggling. So. <laughs> Meanwhile, you stopped at Chick-fil-A on the way home. <laughs> Dude, you got to reward yourself for going to the doctor. Yeah. Everyone knows that. BMI is a outdated, ridiculous number for what it's worth. 
Um, thank you, Meg. Yeah. Finally, someone is She's, nice. She is correct. Like, it's I just it's not relevant anymore. Mm-hmm. I'll go to the doctor. I'm six foot, uh, one seventy five, and they'll tell me that I'm borderline overweight. <laughs> really? I yeah. mean, yeah, I see it. <laughs> That's why I started jaws or sizing. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that extra edge. Yeah, and burn a um, couple calories. But everything was going great up until then. And since in the last like week, I've only done the one run with you where I kind of caught it halfway. Um, I wasn't coughing during the run, but every time we stopped, I was coughing. So hopefully this goes away soon. And I'm not really concerned about Boston because I know we've done two 20-mile runs. We've done a 22. And... I hope that a week off isn't uh, going to change everything. No, um, especially not at this point. Like you, we're going to go into taper anyway, so you'll be fine. And Jared, yeah. you have an engine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So you got I mean, a V8, maybe even a V12 under that. Hood. Dude, he's got a hybrid. I mean, I've got the goals at the end. I need to get to the end so we can get some uh, espresso martinis. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I only, love only the classiest drinks for us. There's the best thing about finishing a marathon and not being able to get really intoxicated. Like you can drink, you can catch that warm feeling. You can have the fun laughs, mm-hmm. but you just don't get, I, I feel like I don't, it doesn't sink in. What is that? I, it's probably, I think you're right. I think your metabolism is working like so fast from, probably cause you're dehydrated too. <laughs> That it just, yeah, I don't, it never seems to quite hit. The worst though is like when we did, uh, we did one of our ultras and I remember trying to drink afterwards and I just Ugh. wasn't enjoying drinking and we were at a party basically. And uh-huh. I was trying to drink and I just, you're not getting intoxicated and that you're getting bloaty and just not feeling good. Yeah. And you're just like, this was, this is a waste. <laughs> yeah. That sounds less fun. I'm debating if I should try and run to the tracksmith house afterwards. Because remember last year oh, when we did the math should. and we were like, you could have done it. If you're going it. for a PR, you definitely have to do well, it. Well, I don't know if I am. What but was your I'm time last hard. year? Uh, 247. And you would have won. You would have gotten. A- well, like the girl who got there ran like a 250 something. So like there was a chance. Yeah. When did you run the 245? Where was that? Chicago. Hey, okay. can you just do it just to make us all feel I'll try. Cool. I'm going to try. I know. It does. I. I feel like we're sort of an amalgamation of talent. And it's like, if one of us does something cool, it's like, all of us. we're all there. Yeah. <laughs> like if Meg's running hundred mile weeks, why do I have to? Yeah. We got yeah. that first. I yeah. can run 30 and yeah. it evens out at 70. The only, the only thing though, is that I have loved about the higher mileage training shoe reviews. I can get, I can just bang out that like nice three pairs. Like if you're doing 60 mile weeks, that's yeah. three shoes just out. Yeah. And you get them done, yeah. Speaking of shoes, Jared, what are you going to run in for your wide feet for Boston? Yeah, I So I figured I would try um, at first the Boston 12 because they come in wide. The and, Adidas Boston yeah, 12? Adidas Boston 12. I really them. like them. Um, I love but, them. But they're a little too firm. So my knees kind of start to feel it towards the end of uh, one of my long runs. Um, I'm going with the... Uh, Rhyme X too strong. Okay. Oh yeah. snap! I, like I know. That. That's I a fun really, one. I that's, really, really love not that, that you're show. a big guy, but that's the big guy choice. Like all our big guy reviewers love yeah. that shoe. I mean, his doctor, his doctor office yeah. would say otherwise. Dude, <laughs> yeah, uh, Herm's runs told me welcome to the club. So guess what? <laughs> you got the official invite. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what if you didn't know that you maybe were a little bigger, and then like. Herms calls you and he's like, Hey, you should also be doing these type of reviews. Yeah. With you're us. in, dude. You're like, what? You're like, hold up. Dude, what I'm are you in. talking about? <laughs> no, I like that though. Uh, I think that's a good shoe. I mean, our big guy reviewers love well, Herms and Chad, our big guy reviewer here, believe in the run. He they both love the Primax uh too strong, which I was like, eh, could take it or leave it. <laughs> but I think we talked about this before. Yeah. I think if you're that have more weight compressing the foam and the plate it gives you gives I mean, back more. It's fun. A, a couple of our long runs I've been wearing. Yeah, and I've worn that uh, while doing it, and like I feel Wait, but great. You, were you wearing the two or the one? The two. Okay. The, I think honestly, I'm I'm so used to such heavy shoes that the weight really doesn't like make a huge difference for me. Um, but 
I I really like them and they've broken in great. Um, I think I might be getting a fresh pair, but I get nervous with a fresh pair. I don't know like how it works, if it gives me any problems. So I'm going to bring That's my fair. old beat up pair just in case. Um, Good what, strategy. Wait, what are you running in, Robbie? Um, the same sure same same pair i ran in last year the all white the all yeah primax um uh, in the uh, audios pro three all right because so i already had the leasing figured out and they get, didn't give me problems mm-hmm. during the race last year so i'm just gonna do that so if the evo one because they're gonna have limited pairs available uh-huh if you got your hands on oh. a pair of evo ones would you try it i mean i feel like nothing I would new have on to, race day like except for the to. evo <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah i mean squeeze your feet into that i try that yeah i mean the only thing that would did you have any issues with the lacing on that when you ran in it? I did because that would be the only thing is that I hate having to figure that out. Would it's, have to hate to figure that it's out. It's actually one of their better lace okay. systems. Okay. It's still got the thin lacing that can kind of be hard to adjust, but it's the the eye sockets and everything makes sense. It's like yeah. the heel collar the same as the as the Audios Pro Three. It Evo? still has. It's more like look behind you, see the Boston, uh, not the Boston, the. Uh, Takumi Sen. Yeah. It's more similar to like that Takumi Sen. So yeah. I, I like I would love to run in the Pro 3. I don't know if I got a defective pair, but my pair has completely destroyed my Achilles. And I don't want to be like, can I get another pair and potentially waste that just in case? Like when I, I don't know. So, yeah. Stick with the strong. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that's solid. Do we have to do another th- Oh, and by the way, I'm not sure what we're going to be wearing on race day, but if you have a race coming up or just for your general training, you might want to get in the flow. You might want to check out Say Sky. Yeah, Say Sky is also a sponsor of this episode. They just came out with their latest uh, flow collection, which came out in March. And I mean, you guys love their stuff. It's very light. It's got all fancy My, technical fabrics. One of the best things about Say Sky that I can say is their sizing is very consistent. Mm -hmm. So any piece that I've gotten, I I wear a medium top, medium bottom. And a lot of times in some of the European or even the Asian companies, the size medium for the U S is typically a large. So you have to go up a size, but you're guessing. And then you get another piece like I got one sore jacket that is a medium that is snug and fits like, to form. Uh And then I got another sore jacket that is extremely baggy. That is, um, yeah, you know, the same size. So the thing that I like about the say sky stuff is that I always feel like anytime they send me something, the sizing is right. Yeah, that is true. And across it, singlet, long sleeve, short sleeve, everything. Yeah. And that's, that is hard to find a lot of, a lot of companies are off on that. And I think the the believe run club got those custom singlets Mm -hmm. and that's one of my favorite pieces ever. Yeah. It is it is a nice singlet. The um they the flow though is even lighter than that one. So I'd say that's an upgrade oh, okay. um to that one. If they maybe if they come out with a black and white version, we should yeah. re up the Believe Run Club and maybe Faster Bastards. So how can someone get that made? Yeah, so if you want to check out the flow collection or any of the their running gear, just go to saysky.com and then you can use the code drop fifteen for a special discount on your next purchase. Will it be fifteen percent off? Probably. All right, sounds like it. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So we did the running. We did. Do we say our events for Boston yet? I sort of. I say it we again. dropped it a little bit. All right. Yeah. Let's run through them. So Friday evening is our first event with New Balance, starting at five p.m. from Solas. Wait. Someone said we are saying it wrong. Sol. Someone says Solus. 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 Yeah. Solus. 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 Yeah, that's basically, you could describe my personality. Okay, so uh, anyway, it's an that's Irish pub. <laughs> um, there will be shoe demo, so if you want to try out the Rebel or the SC Elite, they will be there. Um, Rebel V4. Yeah, the latest. And then uh, we'll do like a quick three-mile fun run, and then we'll head back there for beverages. Trivia. Trivia. We're going to be handing out custom New Balance and Believe in the Run socks. Yes. If you do test out a pair of shoes. Be, oh, yeah, is that the trucker hat? Yeah. You'll right. get a trucker hat if you test out a pair of shoes. Oh, Ashton Kutcher, look out. Early aughts are back. <laughs> I like it. And um, and then, yeah, we'll hang out. We'll have beverages and play some trivia and just have a good time. Nice. And if you can't come Friday because you haven't gotten in yet or whatever happens, Saturday morning we'll be at the New Balance store on Newberry. Do you think we should promote the custom singlet we design? Which will be there. Yeah, but you can get it. You can get your name printed on it. Or yeah. it, So they're going to have four or so different 
singlet designs that you're going to be able to print your name on so that when people see you, they'll be like, Hey, it's Robbie. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's the best thing ever having your name on your singlet it when is. you're running. So you can get it custom printed on any of the singlets, but we actually designed one of the singlets. Yeah. And so you could get a believe in the run new balance, uh, design singlet. Is this- we should put that on thing. Are they giving them away or is it you buy them? So you buy them if you want them customized okay. um, at the store. And so we'll be there from open, which is 10 a.m. until noon. If you want to come see us, the store will be open until 8 p.m. And you can go get your customizations at any time. But we'll be there from 10 a.m. to noon. There's also like a DJ. They're going to also have snacks and fun stuff. So just come by and say hi. Yeah. And if there is any leftover hats or socks, we'll probably be. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, uh, and then Megan. Sunday. The big day, not the big, big day, but the day before the big day, we'll be doing our shakeout run with ASICs like we've done the past few years. Um, there'll be bagels, coffee, all feathers. the- Feathers. Yeah. So Megan Featherson will be at all these events with us. We'll be giving out to the first 300, it's first come, first serve, mm. these lovely corduroy embroidered It might be the hats. best hat we've ever made. It, I love this it hat. Yeah. Is. Yeah. It I hate is. to say, but it is. Yeah. It's not a running hat per se. I so it's a keepsake. It was funny because Carl was sitting at his desk yesterday, and I thought he was just excited about March Madness. Because if you see it out of the corner of your eye, it looks like a Michigan uh, like hat, but because it has an M, yeah, yeah. Uh, or the I believe in the run logo looks a little bit like an M. Um, and so I was like, oh man, Carl's stoked about March Madness. They're not Michigan's not even in it this year, <laughs> and it was a Boston hat. Nice, but no, it looks great. I love it. I've been wearing yeah. it. Yeah, all the time. Too. It's comfy. It's so, a good one. Yeah. Uh, so you can grab one of those if you're one of the first 300 people. We've talked to him because with the amount of people that have RSVP'd, we're like, hey, ASICs, if we run out of hats, you've got to have something. So they're looking around to maybe uh, pump up the numbers with something else. If We'll also have um, some Morton product there. If you haven't tried that, you can. Uh, or if out. you just want to earn like free cash, because those are what? How much does a Morton <laughs> cost? Each oh, one? yeah. Those are, that's something you pick up it's during gold. a race. I'm yeah. actually banking on my fuel at our shakeout. Dude, if you, run, if, so. you, if you if you come to the shakeout run and grab like five Mortons, that's like ten to fifteen bucks, right? It's like in your 20 bucks. Yeah, that covers yeah. your flight home. Yeah, yeah. there's three. There's <laughs> three home stops. At the airport. There's three stops on the on the Boston uh, course that's having Martin. So if you're, I mean, able to grab more of that, if you that pays for the race. Yeah, if you're running it for fun. Uh, like it's not a goal race. I would say just take a camel back with, just fill it up. Yeah. Just stop. Think about the aftermarket. You just, I, the expiration date, you're going to have to get rid of them pretty quick. Boston's yeah. the only race where I always end with Morton's in my, like more, in my pockets. More than you came from. It's like, yes, rich. I don't, I'm actually, I think I'm going to have to. Stick not with, use. Yeah, yeah. I think the last two, those last two runs have thrown me off a little bit. So I'm going to, I think I'm going with. Goo? Goo rock teens. Are you going to have six? I don't you know, know why, what? but that rock feels, that feels, it feels right on for brand. you. It's yeah. on brand for Robbie. It really does. Are you going to have six like The caffeine? best stuff? No. <laughs> yeah. They're all going to be caffeinated also? Yeah. The I Mountain mean, Dew of, 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 uh, <laughs> of, of sports, sports gels. gels. Yeah, that's it. I never realized that the, I used, I just always use rock teens and then when I use all Goo or Morton Calves for New York, someone people were like, holy crap dude you're loading up on it i didn't realize it was a problem and that's why you have panic attacks actually <laughs> you know what you're not wrong full circle here you're not wrong i ate uh, a <laughs> tablespoon of salt and 12 packets of rock chain. i don't know what's wrong doc i'm freaking out my heart's just bouncing around my chest i gotta <laughs> actually now that you mention it the dietary yeah, uh, yeah your sodium like intake from no, the, no, from hat would have sent most people into cardiac arrest yeah. Right before that egg Easter egg hunt, you down three rock tens. Yelling at the kids. <laughs> it's right in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it all comes together. Uh, why did I even spend my time in the yard? ER? I should have just talked to you guys. You see, you could, you We're could basically not An hour of therapy. It would have been fine. Oh, man. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So grab your mornings or don't. So come get... Come get some five-hour energies from me, and we'll have a good time together. Uh, what yeah. what number marathon is this for you? I was just trying to figure out the other day. I think this is eight. So how do you count marathons? Because you just ran a hat. Some people count like <laughs> their trail runs as like I, if they it do. It has to be a race scenario of 26.2. That is the only So for thing. you, it, it is a official measured marathon yeah. that is an event. Yeah. Like I would never count a 50K as an 
marathon. Okay, so your hat is is a 50K. Yeah, it's a totally different category because right. it's a different... Intention. You run it differently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. What if you do a trail marathon versus a road marathon? Mm. Is it still the same? That would be... Yeah, because it's like okay. a race at a marathon. I think, But do those even exist? I did, I did a... Uh, North Face Challenge okay. used to have a marathon, a 50K, and a 50 miler. Yeah. And the first year that I did when I did the marathon. <laughs> you just have to sit. It's whatever distance it is. Sorry. It's just yeah. the race distance. Oh, okay. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, that's fine. I just, the reason I, and then I felt like it was the only time I felt shamed for doing a marathon because you finish and everybody else is done like a 50K or 50 miler. Right. And you're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a th- and this is why it's because if you ran a marathon, you wouldn't say I did two half marathons. Oh, that's a good point. You would never say that. Mm-mm. Some people probably would. Oh. And how many five Ks? <laughs> yeah. How many <laughs> double ten Ks? Four ten Ks. Vertical eh? Ks. Um, yeah. So I'm in the camp where just race day. Even if I ran a, you know how some people did like a virtual marathon. Uh-huh. Meg, would you count your virtual one that you did during? Would you count that as a marathon? I guess I kind of would. Well, hold on. Here's a sec. the thing. Because you really. Did that? Is it did count? Like Boston printed it oh, in right. their virtual book, and you ran it like a race, pretty much. Like you were going for su- your first sub three. Yeah, I would say if I did like a training run that was twenty six, I wouldn't count that. Right? No, me neither. It would have to be a race effort. Do you know what's crazy? Meg did that uh, for her first sub three during COVID. Uh huh. How many years ago was that, Meg? Yeah, that was twenty twenty, right? Four years. You want to hear something crazy? Meg looked up when Big Run Media started. Uh huh. We're gonna be at ten years in October. Wow, decade. Yeah, believe Old in the run. To drink. Believe in the run will Some be. Some countries. Uh, will be um, twenty years old. In, and she was like, "Well, how do you define when?" I'm like, "That that's when the URL was yeah. purchased and we started doing right doing stuff." But yeah, twenty years in five years so from now. Finally getting cool to put the established and then the date. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know that it is. Like yeah. I, I it just blows my mind that like that these that how time is sliding by. Yeah, I mean, because when I think I've been here for almost six years and that's like that's a long time. Yeah. yeah it is. Like when you hit five years, I couldn't believe it. I was like But then again, when I think about things that happened a year ago, it seems like six years ago. Yes, I agree. Like Tokyo? Yeah. I don't even, I can't even remember. Different people. I think I had a beard then. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. I, I was trying to think. When did you shave the beard and go strict mustache? That was actually a couple years ago, at least. Two, it, yeah. two or three years ago. Isn't it weird now? You'll see it. Like you showed me a video and you had the full beard. Yeah. And I was like, that doesn't look right. Yeah. Now my kids, now I'm stuck with it. Yeah. This mustache. I think you have to go with it. This uh, chimney sweeper. If I could grow a nice one and it would compliment my face the way yours does, I would go for you it. You wouldn't look like an evil uh, villain from a like, dastardly Dan, Eastern European. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. <laughs> Whenever you, yeah, when you, I'm not saying it looks bad. I don't think it did look bad when you grow a mustache, but you do look like you could definitely no, commit d- some no, atrocities. No, no mustache. Which in my heart I could. Yeah, that's probably why it fits the personality of the person. It's like a, when it's the external. It's like how dogs look like their owners. Yeah, mustaches look like their owners too. Yeah, the, in, <laughs> the inside of their souls. <laughs> final checking. Here's your residential firm believer Lane delivering the final tip on how to become a firm believer. You ready? Always join the Believe in the Run events. I'm talking about all the summer and winter grids. It's such a fun way to crack some mileage with your local run group. Shout out to my people at Run Now I See. And also, don't forget about the shakeout runs. You'll get to meet other fe- fellow firm believers. Personally, I've become friends with Nate Strides, MD Chicken Legs, Jerry Does, and of course, we only go by our Instagram handles. Who doesn't, right? Right? Okay, I hope you enjoy the three tips that I shared today. Obviously, there's more you could do to become an even firmer believer. For example, how often do you observe pigeons? How do you say peas and carrots instead of goodbye? 
Do you make sure you eat eight bagels and do thirty push-ups a day? Is gel sizing your go-to cross training during the off season? I mean, we both know the list goes on, and I've only got a couple minutes left. So name your favorite believer practice below here in the comment section. Thomas will get back to you. By the way, one last thing:、um, if you're interested to know believe in the run in Mandarin, it is 相信跑步 And then if you want to cheer some runners during the race, you can say. 加油 All right, that's all I've got today. Again, this is your firm believer, Ling, signing off. Seeing is believing, believing in the run. Until next time, stay firm, my friend. All right,、um, should we talk about this onshu? We should. And I have one other question. So, because、uh, I, I was thinking about this with Chipotle, and I, I knew Jarrett would be here, and he's a food guy. Like there, that was like the jam a few years back. Like Chipotle, like that was all people talked about. Wanted to go get Chipotle, and it kind of died out. <laughs> what? What is? Sorry, I, I couldn't think of the. It was all that people. <laughs> <laughs> I was imagining like the news front of newspapers. Yeah, <laughs> Chipotle. Read、shortage. all about it. <laughs> what is, a Barker? No, but it was、oh. a very big. Yeah, I know what you're saying. What is that now? Like what is like? I don't think there is a place now that is like. And and then they're talking about Five Guys like is too expensive. It, it is. I it, agree. One hundred percent. That、yeah. and Panera has gotten absurd too. Oh yeah. Panera's got. The, I just don't like their food at all. Oh my god! I lived when I was even more BMI on the broccoli and cheddar bread bowls. <laughs> oh damn, dude! I get it though. Yeah, dude, your bathroom must have been a scary place.、Um, but no, I, they've fallen off and they've gotten more expensive. It's just not. It's not worth it anymore. So yeah, like, when the U Pick Two is like twenty dollars, get out of here. Yeah, or Panera. Sorry, <laughs>、oh, I mean,、boy. but not sorry. Which actually, really quick, when you pick two from Panera, <laughs> how do they do the half of a sandwich, and where does that other half go? Because they cut it in half. They're saving it for the next pick two. Like it's, a, <laughs> you think so? Yeah. No. They, there's no way because you don't know when the next pick two is coming through. That could、they、be an hour later. Soon, yeah. But they definitely make a whole sandwich and cut it in half. At least they used to. What if they just eat the like, like the lettuce has eat, a? a no, they、cut. have to eat the other half every single time. And there's like someone back <laughs> there freaking. No,、out. I like that you think that them、job. waiting for an hour is something they're not going to do. They're 100 percent going to let that sit there for an hour and then、think、put about, it in a bag. Yeah, think about when you go to the airport and you get those. Yeah, that's、sandwiches. probably been sitting there for days. Yeah, you have a good point. I need a Panera Insider to. to the、work. reason I was thinking about、mm-hmm. one, I'm like, where do people go these days? What's the crave place that people go if、Kava. it's not Chipotle? Ooh, I don't, I mean, I don't think it, I like Cava. I haven't heard much about Cava in at least in the circles that I run in. Yeah. What are you hearing about? Um, and then the other thing is when I go shopping with the boys, like I don't think like I go to a fast food place, so I'm not thinking, oh, how much is this going to cost? I'm just like, oh, you want want that. Like a, a standard trip to Chick Fil A is well over thirty five bucks、Easy. for two kids. It's like forty bucks.、Yeah. It's ridiculous. You, you know where you should go, where you could get super cheap lunch, pretty great.、Mm. Wawa, Costco, Costco, oh, Costco. Oh jeez,、right? you are a walking advertisement. Sorry that I belong to a. Is、club. Costco the new Chipotle? It is kind of hype. Uh, Jared is wearing a Costco hoodie for those who are listening. It's not my only Costco hoodie. No, he has. He has. You have a tracksuit or something. The pajamas. He has the, the pattern.、Slides. He has the supreme、yeah. style. Don't、one. you have pants that have Costco written all over it? It's a sweatshirt. No, I need that.、Oh. You have a hoodie that has it all over. I it. have seen in、uh, or sweatshirt、um, the airport at BWI. Someone had a full Costco like jumpsuit with the slides. I was like, this guy is traveling in style. He's comfy, dude. Like, when Greg, when Greg, when Greg Itahara、uh, complimented you on your Costco s- sweatshirt, I was like, don't, Greg,、oh, do、yes. not、Seriously. do this. And, Just encouraging it. And Jarrett lit up. He was so excited. I, I enjoy when when Thomas has to see the comments about it. Like, <laughs> I don't. He's like, I don't get it. You know why you don't get it? Because you shop at BJ's. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, tell me that wouldn't be a cooler sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not, just, it's I'm sure、Kirkland. they have those、like、too. West, BJ's, West yeah, dude, they should be making BJ. It doesn't have、sweatshirts. their logo isn't iconic. Costco、yeah. has an it's Costco and it's Kirkland. And, BJ、yeah. isn't iconic. <laughs> Did you ever have a Big Johnson shirt? Uh, I wanted one. There's no. no way my parents were letting me have that. Did you ever have from Ocean City the what?、Uh, 
um, Hot the tuna? peckers. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like Big Johnson shirts. I was around eight or nine when at the time, and that was basically like how you got like that was like porn for kids because you never saw like openly talked about. Like you never saw anything because I wasn't allowed to watch anything remotely risque. So then you're at Hershey Park and you're standing in line. You're like, this is like, <laughs> like, like opening my eyes to the world of like sexuality, which is crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. Because it was just like big boobed, like yeah. cartoon characters. Yeah. And you're like learning about all the terms and stuff in a clandestine, clandestine way. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to uh, the Pfeiffers and, and Al. For creating Big Johnson. Yeah, that's a Maryland company, right? Yeah. Do you think, did that make it to the West Coast? It, yeah. It, was, it, was, it made it to Europe. Okay, so I didn't know if that was just regional. No, 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 no. That, it, they have, they made lifetime on that. <laughs> Dude, I hope Carl put some of the cartoons up <laughs> on the screen for this YouTube version. I, I think I've told you this before. They had, and you can probably still find them on the web. I knew the artist and he needed me to do the voice for like uh, Robin or Batman or something for one of the cartoons they made when they used to make them with Flash. So I actually am a voice on a Big Johnson cartoon. I don't even know. This is who you're married to, Meg. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, um, that's amazing, and I'm jealous. Um, but yeah, they were like the adult version of No Fear. It's like you could get away with a lot of stuff. That Yeah. Well, that was the time of innuendo humor. Graphic... We need to bring some of that back because graphic tees were pretty cool for how yeah, cheesy they Al were. Vi they were still cool. is the artist and he would crank out like he was truly a phenomenal uh, illustrator and, and could crank out some stuff that you wouldn't believe. Like I, I know Big Johnson seems like a joke and stuff like that, but he was he was a really good artist. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I'm just looking at some of the tees. <laughs> yeah. Wild. Oh. Man, what a time. Anyways, yeah, so that... Like that would never fly day. now. So this is what I, happens towards the end of these podcasts. Maybe it will. Yes. I think it will. I like oh, you can see Joe here. Rogan sell, selling those. Oh, I could see a lot of people selling these. It's going to come back. You know, when you were a kid and you saw that, you were probably pretty hyper. Yeah. Uh, Boom. Nice. That was the worst. That was a bad one. Ever done. Bad. Speaking but of Big Johnson, <laughs> what's bigger than a high stack shoe? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ready. can't believe you put that so close to your mouth. That's what she said. Um, so speaking <laughs> of Big staying, Johnson, we're staying on Big Johnson. Speaking of Big Johnsons again, yeah, that could that could go right on the back of a T-shirt. Just put it, just put it on there. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, the Cloud Monster Hyper. Yeah, on by on by on, not on running. I I'm not even be. getting into prices anymore, people. We don't set the prices. I don't no. know if you know. We talk about the experience of running in the shoe. It's up to you whether or not you think the prices worth it or not yeah but it's it's you have to mention it okay it's we'll 220 dollars yeah that's not a you have an expensive mention. shoe yeah but it's on so what do no you i don't mind yeah. mentioning it i just when we get a slew of comments it's you're like, just mad at everyone's upset with your daily trainer picks that are all 300 dollar <laughs> shoes i'm talking about the experience <laughs> <laughs> anyway speaking of which we're gonna get yours aren't we maybe and sure. then robbie's yeah. okay so this yeah. shoe is what is the point of this shoe what is the to make you feel foolish for buying the regular monster too? Mm, <laughs> when you could have gone the hyper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't love the update to the uh monster. I don't know. What do you think? I did. I I I liked it quite a bit. Like I said, I didn't really run in the first one, so the second one was kind of a new shoe for me. Okay. But I I enjoyed it. Like I kept putting it back on. It's it's not like a amazing shoe like it's i heavy. think i would still choose the and i know i would still choose the on cloud eclipse yeah. but i liked it what about you robbie monster two what about it what, what do you? i feel yeah i felt like i mean I, I think you and i had similar thoughts yeah. i felt like it was a nice ride but something about it felt a little blocky to me but are we getting to the hyper now yeah. Oh, you're talking about. I was talking about the monster I'm sorry. Too. I'm sorry. Yeah, compared to the monster. Yeah, two. yeah. No, the monster two. Well, I never. The problem with the monster two is I never got. It was too big for me, uh, and so, so I gave Ryan mine gave to Ryan. It. And then by the time I got the a replacement pair, it came with the the hyper. So I was going to run the hyper. I liked I liked the monster one, and then the two. I felt like it. It was just sloppy. The upper was sloppy, huh. which is um, weird because that was the thing we wanted to get fixed. But I also felt like the helion foam was a little firmer or something. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people f- felt like that. Yeah. I think a lot of the reviews kind of said that. So then we get to hyper and I'm like, maybe this would be a better update to the monster. Mm-hmm. But you may, I mean, Robbie, you just talked about it a little bit. You said it felt blocky. It was like funny because when you were first telling me, you're like, I don't know, it feels like chunky. And I was like, it, it feels like I went out and I was like, it feels boxy, almost like you feel the platform under your feet. And that's why I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm running on top of a block. It does have a little more give where the P-backs foam is under yeah, the, or Piba foam for sure. underneath the midfoot or uh, forefoot. But it doesn't do enough to give you that like really responsive bounce that I was hoping for. And then I actually think it feels like a stability shoe. I, I know what you're saying. It Because it doesn't feel, you're right, it doesn't feel super stable. I think that carrier in the back that. It, I felt that that's what it was like because I was trying to describe the blocky feeling. Yeah. And what I think it is, it has such a firm uh, back half that it almost naturally creates a stability shoe feel like the old style of uh, stability we used to have mm-hmm. like almost like, and you can see the foam here stops. And so you have the Helion foam here, which is a little firmer on the instep, yeah. which would be normally where you'd have posting on a traditional stability shoe. Mm-hmm. And then I just really felt like there was no give laterally in the heel right. or, or medi- like it did either way. It didn't really give much. So yeah, for those who are listening, the, there's a P-Bax foam that goes from the, it goes through the whole shoe, but starting at midfoot to the rear is a Cloudtech. It's called Cloudtech phase midsole. It's basically, I don't believe it's, I don't think it's P-Bax, right? The carrier. The, the, only, no, the only part that's P-Bax is that white foam in the forefoot. Right. So then it basically wraps around. Traditional Helion in the carrier. Then there's like yeah an insert of, and a healthy insert of Piva. I don't know if it's Pbax or it is Pbax oh, brand name brand Pbax. All right. Um, I'm it, just not sure why they didn't bring that all the way through to the heel because I think that would have made the big difference, and you would have had that softer landing versus that blocky feeling you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Things that know. are good about this though, and definitely better than the the regular monster is the upper really fits nicely on this. That is true. Uh, I thought they, I I don't know what is the difference, but the upper is substantially better fitting. And I really like the laces. Okay, I was going to say, what do you think about those laces? The laces are amazing. I love them. They've got weird little rubber rubber grippies. Rubber knobs on the uh, the laces Mm -hmm. that pretty much. You you didn't find that annoying to tie in some ways? Not once it was tied. It's like the it works both ways. It's a yeah. little bit annoying. To, oh, I loved it to tighten them, but when they well, stay, Megan doesn't do the fancy uh, knots that we do. She okay. does does like I'll tie it, granny, and knot. then I'll flip that sucker in three times yeah. and have like like a little. It looks like Marge Simpson's hairdo on top yeah. of her shoe. <laughs> it works, man. It does work. I got, I got yeah, you. your shoes stay on, and you're faster than me. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't dislike the shoe as much as you guys did. Like I. I enjoyed it. I'm I'm not sure I get it. Like I don't Do, know. I don't why know that we, we said it. we disliked no, it. No, I didn't dislike oh. it. I just I the ride itself is actually pretty pretty nice. I here's the thing. I didn't find it 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 compared to other super trainers, I didn't think the ride was that special. I right. thought it felt nice for a daily trainer, mm. but it doesn't get up to the level of Super blast. Yeah. Not so obviously no. Even does. the new balance as a uh, 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 SE trainer V2. Uh, I, I even like the SE tra- trainer V1. Um, like the Saucony speed. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah. I mean, you can get the endorphin pro Saucony endorphin pro for le- basically same. the same, same price. price. So, and we said we wouldn't talk about price, but yeah, that's, it no, you said it. We said I, we I would. I know, but it, I mean, I guess you can, it if does matter compare. when you're, yeah, when you're comparing yeah. to other shoes, so it you, does. But see, here's the thing. Like if then you go, I think on though brand wise, like it, it discounts like the brand. Like if you buy, if you go out to buy a Burberry jacket versus a jacket from the gap, yeah, the price is different. They're going to do the, basically the same thing as far as performance but the Burberry has a brand connotation. I think in running, people don't want to admit there's certain brands that have a higher cash. 
I mean, I mean, aesthetically, yeah. they look great. I think all of them. Yeah, they look awesome. You're paying for you're paying for that, do essentially. You, but do you like it? Do you like it more than the Cloud Monster Two? I do. So I mean, that right there is Cloud Monster Two is 180. Yeah. But I, I like it better than the Cloud Monster Two. I just don't know that this this wouldn't I I, I wouldn't necessarily this wouldn't make my rotation. Yeah, I think I mean I've only tried it on the pair that I got. Um, but the upper is a lot better than, than the cloud monster too. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the $40 difference to have a, a pair of shoes that are not great and your foot might be sliding around. That's yeah, bet between the two shoes. Yeah. And if you, if you really want the on monster, go monster hyper. Yeah. I mean, I'm enjoying it. It's not like anything I'm super excited about, but I'm, I think it's, I well, like it. Okay. So when you're done with the review, Will you continue to wear for like shorter runs? Yeah. Like the, I think they're perfect for the, my afternoon runs when I have like a double and it's four miles and it's just like a looks good. Feels fine. Weight wise. It's, it's what two ounces lighter than the, it's pretty, um, yeah. than the monster too. That was the other thing is it felt to me, it felt a little heavier as than it was as well. Cause yeah. it's pretty light. Isn't it weird when we try some shoes and they weigh, a lot more and then you run in them and you're like, oh, they feel. I also yeah. think it depends on where the weight is coming from. Yeah. If it's bottom heavy, if you feel that more. I think that's what it is this in is, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, yeah. But overall. I mean, we're going to do a review for it. You're going to give it a green light? You can't give that away. Got to make people watch the yeah. review. That Probably should not. be the Duh. question. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it for that shoe. Yeah. Might be it for the show. I think Is we're, it? I think I we're don't know. good. Do you want to ask Jarrett any questions? Oh, yeah. We're at, holy crap. Is that really the time? Yeah. Oh, we're at an hour and 28 minutes. We didn't even cover Dune, Dune Talk. All that's, right. That we can't. That's, this was my whole goal, and right. we made it. <laughs> we're not talking about hey, it. Maybe so real just quick about Dune. I'm, just for Dune. <laughs> I'm about to walk out. I'm going to walk right out of here. All right. No, that is long enough. Like a Fremen, are you going to do it like with steps that aren't rhythmic? Is that a Dune reference? Mm -hmm. Ugh, nice. gross. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Jared, thanks for coming Your in. Your eyes are bluer than blue. I, you know, I'm glad blue you appreciate blue. it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, right? I'm here. I can't wait to spend We're the so weekend with you. so excited to be in Boston with you. Oh, it's going to be fun. That's my favorite. Like, that's such a fun such weekend. Such a good weekend. Last year, when I just took photos, I was so tired. Are you bringing and a I baby? I run, so no. Sadly no, not. Are we going to have a, and I think you should leave marathon like we did? I think we do that and we watch Triple Wait, D. I thought Allie You're going to have your you. photos taken this year. I know. Carl's going to be out there. Oh, nice. He's going to have the pass and that you had. And oh. Justin Hall. Yeah. Do I, do I Carl carry, should be doing video. Like, or whatever. Do I carry like one of those air tags so Carl knows where I am at Make all sure time? that you have oh, your hands up when you are, for the whole 100 meter finish, hands up. Okay. Oh, and by the way, someone's picking picking up their phone here at the office. So I found them. We found Do the owner of the phone. Do you think you'll get reward? They're coming to get the phone. That phone looks like a woman's phone. Is it a woman? It is. Okay. Yep. Uh, isn't that weird? You can tell. What? That who dropped it like 7,000 times? No, yeah. it got run over by a car. Oh. I yeah. found it in the middle of the road. Turn, turn it over, Meg. Or not Meg. Robbie. I was literally driving and I saw it and I thought. That's a new one too. I said, I think car? that's a, I, I saw it in the middle of the road. I said, Wait, I think that's can a I phone. See the thing, yeah, and um, I that's a new one. Turned around and picked it up. I think a car ran over it right before I picked it up. Wow! But it's just the screen; everything else works. Like oh, the, you know what we just did? The glass. We saw a dime on the ground when I was running with Jarrett. Yeah, didn't touch it. So. Yeah, well, no, I was thinking that Rich. we would make we would make a scavenger hunt, and we could we could pinpoint Geocache. on Google Maps all of the change we find. And you could go around and find that. Would, would that not be fun? I would appreciate that's that. That's your <laughs> Easter egg hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I would be into that. Yeah. You might have to look around, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, it's right there. I would be into it. Do it Do it next run. All right, Meg's done. We're done. Yeah, my headphones are All right, yeah. thanks, Carl, I'm, for um, editing this up. Uh, see you guys in Boston. Or yep. I guess we're there already. It's Friday. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Dude, no. have another week. week. Okay, we'll be there soon. All right. <laughs>